14.6 applies sum and difference formulas. Sine b over tan b equals cos b. Remember that we have sine b over tan, which is just sine over cosine. Keep it, change it, flip it. And that leaves us with cosine b, which you might read as cos b. So here are some formulas that you absolutely need to know and need to memorize. The sine of a plus b is equal to sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. The cosine of a plus b is cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. And then tangent a plus b is tan a plus tan b over one minus tan a tan b. Then when you do the difference formulas, you basically just switch all the signs. So here there was a plus sign. So in this formula, it's gonna be sine a cosine b minus cosine a sine b. For cosine, we're gonna have cosine a cosine b plus sine a sine b. And then here, the top will switch to a minus and the bottom, we're going to switch to a plus. Notice that when you have sine, it's sine cosine plus cosine sine, but cosine is cosine cosine minus sine sine, and then tangent is this one. Okay, so you do need to memorize all three of these basically, and then you just flip the sign to get the difference formulas. In these questions, I'll be asking you to find the exact value of, for example, sine seven pi over 12. And this might look familiar to what we've been doing a lot in this chapter and even in chapter 13. The problem is that seven pi over 12 is not one of the ones I know. I knew all the 30, 60, 90 stuff. I knew all the 45, 45, 90 stuff. But this is not one of them that I know. And we cannot use our calculator. So what I'm trying to say is we don't know we don't know what the sine of seven pi over 12 is offhand. But we do know our 30, 60, 90 triangles, AKA our pi over six, pi over three, pi over two triangles, right? I just put those in radians. And we know our 45, 45, 90 triangles, AKA, pi over four, pi over four, pi over two triangle. Okay, so let's go back to this question. You'll see that we're dealing with twelfths here. So since the twelve is in the denominator, let's think in twelfths. That means our pi over six that we had up here, we could think of as two pi over 12. Our pi over three that we had up here, we could think of as four pi over 12, and our pi over four that we had up here, we could think of as three pi over 12. So my question to you is gonna be, so how, so how do we make seven pi over 12 out of the above? The reason I'm drawing on the above is because these are things I know. I know the sine, I know the cosine of these things. So let's see, seven pi over 12 is equal to, well we could add the four and the three. So four pi over 12 plus three pi over 12. Okay, so you're probably thinking right now I could have done that in elementary school. Where are we going with this? Let me just switch colors and let's start solving the problem. The sine of seven pi over 12, we just said, is equal to the sine of, let's use what we have here, four pi over 12 plus three pi over 12. Simplify that down a bit and we can have four pi over 12 is equal to pi over three and three pi over 12 is just pi over four. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply this law, sine a plus b is sine cosine plus cosine sine. So we get sine 
cosine plus cosine sine. And now we can do this thing. We know the sine of pi over 3. Well, why don't we just draw our triangles? Pi over 3 is our 60 degrees. What's opposite? Root 3 over 2. What's adjacent? That's our 1 half. Our hypotenuse is always 1. And our other will be our 45 degrees that we had. And those are just root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, and 1. All right, so the sine of pi over 3, pi over 3 is a 60 degrees, is root 3 over 2 times the cosine of pi over 4 is just the root 2 over 2 plus the cosine of pi over 3 is what's adjacent is the 1 half times the sine of pi over 4. Well, that's also root 2 over 2. So let's just solve this. Root 3 times root 2 is root 6 and 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 times root 2 is root 2 over 4. And so that's my final answer. I could write it as root 6 plus root 2 over 4, but the root 6 and the root 2 do not mix and match. They're not like terms. I cannot combine them, just like you can't combine like terms. You can't combine radicals that are not the same. And so that is your answer. We're going to apply the same exact logic with this problem here, and you might like this one better because it's dealing with degrees, and I know a lot of times you think easier in degrees. So we're going to think about our 30, 60, 90, and our 45, 45, 90, and how can we make 15? Well, I kind of know that 15 is equal to 45 minus 30. That's going to work out really nice because I know that the cosine of 15 degrees is simply the cosine of 45 minus 30. And using your cosine, cosine A minus B is cosine cosine plus sine sine. So we're going to have cosine cosine plus sine sine. Cosine of 45 degrees is just the root 2 over 2. The cosine of 30, well 30 is here, so the cosine is adjacent. That's root 3 over 2 plus the sine of 45 degrees is just the root 2 over 2, and the sine of 30 degrees, well, what's opposite the 30 degrees is the 1 half. And so, huh, this is starting to look really similar to that other problem, perhaps the same exact thing. Okay, and so I was asking a little bit different of a question here, but get the same answer. You might want to think to yourself why, and we can discuss that more in class. But the main idea here is use the facts that you know, add them up, subtract them to solve the problems you're getting at. In this problem here, I want to solve cosine A minus B given that I know what cosine A is and I know what sine B is. So remember that cosine A minus B is going to be cosine cosine plus sine sine. All right, and I only know the cosine of this one and the sine of this one, so I need more information. I'm going to draw on what I did in 14.3, I think it was right here. I'm going to draw some pictures. And so this one I know is between pi and 3 pi over 2, so I'm somewhere here. Remember, bring your triangle up to the axis. The cosine is negative 4 fifths, so you know that the hypotenuse is 5, and you know that the adjacent or the x-coordinate is negative 4. And so this is clearly my 3, 4, 5, but since it's down, I make it negative. And then let's draw this one. So this one's between 0 and pi over 2, so remember, bring it up there. And you know the hypotenuse is 13, and the sine, which is the opposite, or the y-coordinate, is 5. And from your SATs, you might know 5, 12, 13. If you didn't, you can just use the Pythagorean theorem. And so now I have all the information I need to do this problem. So cosine A minus B is going to be cosine A. What's the cosine A? Well, they gave us that. Negative 4 fifths. And then the cosine of B, let me just put an A and a B there so I can label them. The cosine of B is 12 over 13, and my signs are right. Make sure your signs are right. Plus, the sine of A is negative 3 fifths. And then the sine of B, well, they gave us that one, 5 over 13. 
Then just multiply this out. Four times 12 is 48. 13 times five is 65. Unfortunately, there was just nothing I could cross out there. And then when I go to this one, I could actually cross these fives out. So that's just minus three over 13. And it might've actually been a good idea not to even simplify this because I needed a common denominator anyway, but I get negative 63 over 65 as my final answer. How am I gonna simplify this one? Well, I know that I have sine cosine in this one minus cosine sine. And I can simplify this further because I know five pi over two, let's think about five pi over two. This is pi over two, two pi over two, three pi over two, four pi over two, five pi over two is just up there. So this is the point zero, one. And so the cosine of five pi over two is just going to be zero, and then we have minus cosine x, and the sine of five pi over two is a y coordinate, or one. And so we're gonna have zero minus cosine x, or minus cosine x, and that's my final answer. What about this one? I wanna solve it. So I'm going to do, this is cosine, 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 minus sine, sine, Okay, so that's the first part, that was just that. And then I have plus, now I'm gonna be doing this part. I have cosine, cosine, switch the sign, so plus sine, sine equals zero. Let's see what I know. I'm dealing with pi, which is right here, and I know that coordinate's negative one, zero. So the cosine of pi is negative one. So I have cosine x times negative one. Remember cosine, just what's the x coordinate there? Minus sine x. The sine of pi is what's the y coordinate there? And that's just zero. Plus cosine x, and the cosine of pi again is negative one, plus the sine x sine pi, which is zero. And you know what, I probably could have just combined like terms, I would have had two cosine x cosine pi, and these would have canceled out. Probably would have been a good idea, Mr. Sham. Really. All right, so I have negative cosine x, and that just becomes zero, and then I have minus cosine x, and that becomes zero equals zero. In other words, negative two cosine x equals zero. Divide both sides by negative two, we get cosine x equals zero. Now we're on zero to two pi, and both the zero and the two pi are included in this case. Where is cosine zero? Just gonna draw the little axis again, and here's my unit circle. Where is the x coordinate zero? The x coordinate is zero here and here. In other words, at pi over two or three pi over two. And those are my two answers. And that's it for this lesson. Bye.